I'm going to take you on a journey to an amazing forest. What do we see? A lot of trees? Not just any trees. Longleaf pine. Gigantic trees that grow 100 feet tall. Will we see anything else? You're going to see a very special snake. What's so special about it? It's the longest snake native to North America, and it can grow almost nine feet long. Wow, that is long. It's the Eastern Indigo Snake. I'm not sure I like snakes. Is it scary? No, not at all. The Indigo Snake is gentle with people and non-venomous, which means it doesn't produce poison. The Indigo is also a threatened species. What does that mean? It means their numbers are very low. Scientists are even raising indigos in hatcheries and then releasing them back into the wild. Why are there so few indigos? A lot of their natural habitat, including longleaf pine forest, has been lost, fragmented, or degraded. That means broken up into small pieces or no longer a healthy home. Oh, that's so sad. Loss of habitat is a serious problem for the indigo and other animals like the gopher tortoise. I'd like to see a gopher tortoise. Gopher tortoises are special too. They're a keystone species. I heard they share the long burrows that they dig with over 300 other creatures. That's right. And one of the species that the gopher tortoise shares its burrow with is the indigo snake. Why would an indigo go into a tortoise burrow anyway? Indigo snakes like to hang out in burrows with lots of other animals, like frogs and mice and even other snakes. And female indigos actually use the sandy apron at the entrance of the burrows to lay their eggs. Oh, wow. And when it gets cold in winter, the indigo snake moves into burrows to stay warm. Because snakes are cold-blooded? Exactly. But when it gets warm in spring, the indigo moves to the wetter, cooler areas of the floodplain, and that's where they stay for the hot summer. Right. Snakes can't tolerate too much heat either. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I almost forgot. Sometimes indigos go into gopher tortoise burrows when there's a prescribed fire. Prescribed fire? What's that? It's when wildland fire lighters set controlled burns to reduce the shrubby understory in the forest. But isn't fire dangerous for the animals? These prescribed fires don't move fast. Indigos and other animals have time to get out of the way. But I still don't get it. Why remove it? What's it called? The understory? Well, that way, sunlight can reach the forest floor and native plants, grasses, and beautiful wildflowers have the chance to grow. Animals like deer, gopher tortoises, and bobwhite quail, and even pollinators like butterflies actually need this fire to happen. That way they'll have a healthy habitat. That's good. But hey, you haven't told us what indigos eat. Things like rats and toads. And also venomous snakes like rattlesnakes and copperheads. That's so cool. You're lucky you got to see an indigo. Is it okay to pet them? Hmm, let's ask an expert. Please remember that eastern indigo snakes are threatened with extinction and protected by laws. Only people with special permissions, like certain wildlife biologists, are allowed to handle these snakes. So, if you're lucky enough to see an eastern indigo snake in the wild, look. But don't touch. And if you ever see one crossing the road, be careful not to run it over. They're awesome creatures. Did you know the scientific name for the indigo means the emperor of the forest? Unless it's a female snake, then it's an empress. Empress of the forest. I like that. I like that a lot.